Okay, so let's have a look at Google Maps and we're going to create a basic map. And for that we're going to need a... Um, well, first of all, we need of course a script tag where we input or insert the actual API JavaScript file from Google and um, it should go in your head section. Now in CodePen there is no such thing because it's already added to the top but if you do it on your own you do it like this. So you can find this of course at the Google Maps API JavaScript page. Just Google for it. Um, one thing here that you will need from now on <clears throat> unless you have an old server which before have been using Google Maps without the API such as uh, CodePen. But anyway, so you need to get a Google Maps API key um, to be able to use Google Maps on a new well, web page that hasn't used it before. Actually just search for Google Maps API key and you'll get right there get a key. So you need to log in with your Google account and then you can just well create a new project or use any existing one. Well of course you won't have an existing one so you create a new project, give it a name, create and enable API and you will get this long string of numbers and characters um, and you save that one somewhere um, and you can also get back to it from there's a Google API Manager console developers google.com um, so in here you can see how many times you have used the API um, and you can also say that well there should be a restriction for instance so my browser key can only be used at these domains and uh, yeah all right. Um, all right. But for this code pen example, I'm going to put this somewhere else. I'm going to just take um, this out since I don't have the key right now. I don't want to share my key on YouTube, so I'm just going to copy this part and get rid of that one because we're right now inside a body here of HTML, so that's why I can't use that one. Um, but if I go into JavaScript, I can say I want to add this library here. This is how it works in CodePen. All right. Uh, save and close. All right. So what we do need is a an HTML tag to place our map in. Now we don't need to add any HTML or CSS anymore. Now we have the map div tag here, so it will be filled with, with well, a Google map. All right, so the Google map constructor is like this. Google maps map. So google.maps includes markers and info windows and stuff like that. Right now we're going to create a map, so that's part of the API, and that is a so this construction method here. Uh, you have to pass in two, um, two objects or yeah. First of all, you need to have a div tag. Where to put it? Well, it doesn't have to be a div tag. It needs to be an element of some sort, an HTML element even and then you need some options and these options are in the form of a JSON formatted uh, object. It's just, well, it's a JSON string or an object, either way. So, um, how do we get this one? Well, just to make things clear, 
we could do that like this. So let's create a variable, call it HTML element. No, that's stupid. Let's call it map div. I make that one be the same as document get element by ID and the ID of course is map this one all right so now that one is in here so we can say that map did this is where you will put your map Google all right and when it comes to options, you can either type them in here or we can just create that object first of all. So let's do that. And it's an object. So you could either start like this or you can start adding all the properties inside of here, like center colon and then add a lot LNG I'll get into that pretty soon here, but either that or you just do it dot syntax. I'm going to do that for clarification because I think it's a bit more obvious for some of you who think that JSON is a bit weird. So I'm just going to say that options dot which dot center equals which would be the same as saying center colon and then something, and then comma for the next um, property. And not center, center. All right, so ooh, this is gonna be tricky right away because the center option, where to center the map is also in the form of an object, an object that has two properties, lats and LNG. All right, should we try to do this one in JSON then? Uh, well, let's do it. Object literal, that's the right name for it. All right, so lat and LNG. So how do I find these? Well, either you know it or you just guess it or you use geolocation, for instance. Um, that we talked about before so to get those latitude and longitude values um, so I just happen to know because I've been doing this a couple of times that uh, Yuan Shipping is well it's about here I don't need any more specificity with those numbers but the, of course the more decimals you have the more precise you can get a uh, position Anyway, so I know that this will be somewhere in Yuan Shipping. Um, yeah, for now we're just going to do this because this is not really true, but we'll get back to it. So let's continue with the options for now. The options that we need to create the map. Um, all right, so that center that is necessary. So it's required. Options.zoom is also required, and that's how much you want to zoom in on the map. So it's from 1, I think, or and up to 22. It's a bit different depending on the type of map you have and so on. The zoom level, I'm just going to set this to 12. All right. Now there are tons of options that you can set for. Uh, Google Maps. I'm just gonna paste them here so that you can see that there are a few of them. So here are the options. All right, so there's background color, center, clickable icons, disable default UI, disable double click zoom, draggable, Draggable cursor, dragging cursor, full screen control. Well, there are tons of them, and you can look them up all at the Google uh, Maps API for JavaScript. Um, 
but we'll just pick a few just to see what happens and uh, we can do that as we go along we're just gonna be good for this these are the required options so we can build up and add more um, but let's make this map happen and one thing that could be useful is to not have it just on a straight line because we are using a a reference here to an HTML element so we need to make sure that that element was there to be captured in this JavaScript make sure that everything has been loaded um, before we continue sure we could try it it might work here and CodePen is pretty good at that um, so what I would do then is create a variable for my map op object so that I can actually access it later on. It could be very useful to have that in a global scope when adding info windows and markers and stuff. If you do that outside through buttons and whatever. So I'm going to call this gmap and it's a new instance of the Google Maps map with the map div where to put it and the options that tells me to center right here over Yuan Shipping and the zoom level 12. So that's basically all you need to create a map. You need a lat and LNG, latitude and longitude value, and, and you need a div tag to put it in. All right, so to make sure that the page has loaded, we could actually facilitate one of the um, built-in uh, there is a, a, a DOM listener so I'm just going to copy this part here and say that well Google Maps events and add DOM listener and we should listen for do listeners on window sorry for that and when it has loaded run the function in it map so when we have the javascript file this one we can also access some events and one of these are google maps event add dom listener window load so just copy this line of code basically um, and when the entire window has loaded all the elements and everything you can run the function that actually creates the map here. So if we put this inside of a function instead and give it a name, I'm going to give it a different name so you can see the difference here. So function and init initialize. Oh, let's call it that. All right put that one in here instead now there's no map I have a DOM listener using for the window to load but it's trying to run init map so let's copy this name instead and run initialize when the page is loaded All right so this is to make sure that everything has been loaded the div tag is here and everything should work before it tries to do this all right of course this will not work either if it's you know not at the bottom of the page after the the div that we have up here is actually rendered on page and also you could add all of these inside to not litter the uh, global scope um, so sure these are not necessary outside of this initialize function so we're just making this a little bit more complicated but not necessarily very complicated it's still just this line of code new google maps map a reference to an html element and the options for centering and zoom. Oh, so this is end of initialize. All right. 
so that we don't forget that one. All right, so let's have a look at the options that we can add. How can we change this map? Well, just to get started, of course, we can zoom in or zoom out. If I zoom out, you will see a lot more, right? And if I zoom in, I will have a closer look. Well, that was one, <laughs> and here's 16, so right. Here's 7-Eleven, here's the university, right? Um, yeah. And I'm centering not in right above it right now, so I could figure that out, but I'm not going to do that right now. Instead, we're going to have a look at other options. So zoom right back out to maybe 14. See if, yeah, that's a good view. Uh, as you can see, there are some some user interface. Uh, from Google here, there is a Street View guy here, and um, there are some zoom in, zoom out buttons. You can switch to satellite and so on. Um, if you want to get rid of all these user interface, all you have to do is add another option. Disable default UI and just set that to true. And now all of those buttons are gone. And then if you want to, you can add them one by one. So for instance, let's say you want to have, well, maybe we want the full screen control. So options dot full screen Control. If that one is true, I get this little icon up here. So I can go into full screen. Um, and then, of course, there's an option for where to put this one right here in the center. Right, yeah. Options for, for almost anything. All right, so um, other things that are not necessarily graphic. If I say options, let's add to this object here and add draggable false. Then I don't have a hand cursor anymore and I can't click and drag to move the map. When is this good? Well, it's very good on a mobile phone where you just want to show a map of where your business is, for instance. So you might have a marker saying, go here. This is where we are. Because if you try to scroll through a map on, on a mobile device and there's no space on the left or right side where I can actually pull, um, it's nearly impossible to get through the map, right? or get past it, because if you try to scroll, you actually just drag the map. So setting this draggable to false is, is pretty good. Also, if you want to add like a click function, so um, yeah, when you click somewhere, you should have something happen, adding, adding an event listener for the map, then draggable is not going to make it click either. Another thing, talking about scrolling and dragging. So if you're on a, well, a, on a laptop or a computer, if I scroll, I'm trying to scroll the page, but I'm scrolling when the cursor is on top of the map, then of course I will zoom. And that could also be kind of annoying. So if you want to turn off the scroll wheel, we go into And we, oh, sorry, scroll wheel equals false. Now I can't scroll to zoom anymore, which can be a very good thing also. Because, well, of course, you need to add the zoom control, so we could add that one. Now that we have disabled the default UI, Let's go into options and add zoom control. 
is it control yeah true yeah colon we're using dot syntax and not all right so plus and minus so we use that to zoom and not the scroll wheel all right uh, I'm gonna get rid of full screen control since it's not default um, it's gonna go away all right what else do we have that could be useful well there is one thing that's kind of cool options styles but here's the thing with styles um, that's a completely different story um, there is a, a great website that Google has where you can actually create your own styles to have water turn into black and everything that's green turn that into yellow and so on so you can recolor the entire map kind of tedious to do that on your own so there's a great web page for it um, let me just look that one up so create a style you can pick from any of these pre-made styles of course or you go into more options and then you say wow okay so what about landscape i want all geometry to be yellow or i don't know pink this is awful but anyway you you get the points and you can change all of these things here in different colors and then when you're done you get this huge json string that you just copy and add that as your your styles in here just paste that long string of, of JSON to uh, color your map well otherwise um, let's stick with this there are as I mentioned tons of, of things you can do disable double click to zoom or uh, well change of course if you want to have a satellite instead of of this default roadmap um, so options dot map type id equals and then the default is roadmap so i don't even have to type that and you can also go for hybrid so that should be a satellite with some roads on it so some of these things are oh, can't scroll anymore oh, and I can't drag either because I turned that off all right so all right and there's just pure satellites without the roads all right and then there's terrain and it shows you kind of elevation so you can see that there is a mountain here uh, on the west side of Yonshipping right so <clears throat> these are the different um, maybe most common anyway useful uh, options for for Google Maps.